Red vs. Blue from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, http colon backslash backslash n dot wikipedia dot org. Background. Red vs. Blue grew out of Bernie Burns' voiceover enhanced gameplay videos that he created for a site called DrunkGamers.com, which was run by Jeff Fink, later Jeff Ramsey, and Gustavo Sarola. Having played Halo Combat Evolved extensively, the Drunk Gamers crew discussed one day whether the Warthog, a vehicle in the game, actually looked more like a cat. This discussion, recreated in Episode 2, turned out to be, quote, the spark for the whole series. With the idea that a full story could be developed, Burns created a trailer for Red vs. Blue, but it was largely ignored, and for unrelated reasons, Drunk Gamers soon closed. Four months later, Computer Gaming World contacted Ramsey for permission to include a Drunk Gamers video in a CD that they were going to distribute with the magazine. Ramsey granted permission, but he and Burns felt that they needed a website to take advantage of the exposure from Computer Gaming World. As a result, they resurrected the Red vs. Blue project, re-releasing the trailer to coincide with the Computer Gaming World issue. The first episode proper was released on April 1, 2003. Rooster Teeth was initially unaware of the Machinima movement. Matt Hollum stated in an interview with GameSpy in 2004, quote, When we first started Red vs. Blue, we thought we were completely original. We never imagined that there were other people out there using video games to make movies, much less that it was a new art form with a hard-to-pronounce name and an official organization, end quote. The nature of the series was different from Burns' initial expectation. A partial character introduction released in between the original trailer and the first episode featured extensive action and violence and was set to Limp Biscuits break stuff. However, the crew realized as the project developed that Red vs. Blue was going to focus more on situational comedy rather than on the heavy action initially implied. Indeed, although the series parodies video games, Ramsey noted, quote, We try not to make it too much of an inside joke, and I think we use more bureaucracy and military humor than anything else which everybody working in an office can identify with." End quote. Rooster Teeth noted that Red vs. Blue has a wide variety of influences, including Homestar Runner and possibly Mystery Science Theater 3000. Rooster Teeth also initially envisioned the project to be short, but the series grew beyond their expectations. Burns and Ramsey noted that they had preconceived a list of jokes for Red vs. Blue and, at the time of the inception, had expected the series to run six to eight episodes. By episode eight, however, they realized that the series had fleshed out more than expected. They had covered only about one-third of their list. Another early series length cited by Burns in the middle of season one was 22 episodes, but, driven by the series' popularity, he later realized that there was potentially more story than could be covered in that length and was able to conceive an extension of the Season 1 plot. Just before the debut of Season 4, Ramsey's only indication of final series length was that Rooster Teeth planned, quote, to make as many episodes as they can. Production. Main article, Red vs. Blue Production. The writing process for the series has changed over time. Early in Season 1, Burns wrote the episode script from week to week, with minimal planning in advance. Major plot events were conceived shortly before they were filmed. In the second season, Matt Hollum also became a main writer. A rough plot outline is now written before a season begins, although the actual content of an individual episode is still decided on a more short-term basis. Because Red vs. Blue is loosely based on the Halo universe, Rooster Teeth encountered some difficulties when trying to synchronize events in the series with the release of Halo 2. Aside from a few scenes created using Marathon Infinity, Marathon 2, and the PC version of Halo, the series is mostly filmed using a number of interconnected Xbox consoles. As the series title suggests, the videos are largely set within the Halo map Blood Gulch, and its Halo 2 counterpart, Coagulation. However, some episodes have been filmed on other maps, including Sidewinder from Halo and Zanzibar from Halo 2. Within a multiplayer game session, the people controlling the avatars quote-unquote puppet their characters, moving them around, firing weapons, and performing other actions as dictated by the script, and in synchronization with the episode's dialogue, which is recorded ahead of time. The camera is simply another player whose first-person perspective is recorded raw to a computer. As the recording occurs within the game, a few different bugs and post-production techniques have been exploited in order to achieve desired visual effects. In particular, Adobe Premiere Pro is used to edit the audio and video together, create letterboxing to hide the camera player's heads-up display, add the title and fade to black screens, and create some special visual effects that cannot be accomplished in-game. Reception 
Red vs. Blue attracted interest immediately. The first episode had 20,000 downloads within a day. Shortly after episode 2, Bungie Studios contacted Rooster Teeth. The crew had feared that any contact from Bungie would be to force an end to the project, but Bungie enjoyed the videos and was supportive. A deal was eventually struck to ensure that the series could continue legally, without license fees, and without creative guidelines from Microsoft, Bungie's parent company, except for specifically commissioned videos. From there, Red vs. Blue continued to attract more attention, and by April 2004, viewership was estimated at about 1 million. Red vs. Blue was widely acclaimed within the machinima industry. The first season won awards for Best Picture, Best Independent Machinima Film, and Best Writing at the Academy of Machinima Arts and Sciences 2003 Machinima Film Festival. Two years later, at the 2005 festival, the series' third season won an award for Best Independent Machinima and was nominated for five others. Among film critics, the response was generally positive. Darren Waters of BBC News Online called Red vs. Blue quote-unquote riotously funny and quote reminiscent of the anarchaic energy of South Park. Reviewing the three-season DVDs for Cinema Strikes Back, Charlie Prince wrote, quote, Red vs. Blue is hysterical, in large part because all the characters are morons, and so the seemingly intense conflict with the opposing base doesn't exactly work the way you'd think it would. End quote. However, Ed Halter of The Village Voice dismissed the humor as shallow, describing the first season as, quote, Clerks meets Star Wars. Graham Leggett, then director of communications of Lincoln Center's Film Society, indirectly countered this criticism by arguing, quote, the literary analog is absurdist drama. Another common criticism of Red vs. Blue was that its season 3 plot was too far-fetched and out of character for the series. Charlie Prince wrote, quote, By the third series, however, the Red vs. Blue idea seems to be running out of steam. It's not funny so much as just odd. Writing for the Honolulu Star Bulletin, Wilma Jandok agreed that the first part of, quote, Season 3 throws the teams into a ridiculous situation and has limited member interactions, leading to a lack of witty dialogue. Nevertheless, both critics expressed optimism that the series would improve from this low point. Outside the machinima and film community, Red vs. Blue has also attracted positive attention. Rooster Teeth Productions has been asked to create special Red vs. Blue videos for various events. For example, Microsoft has commissioned Red vs. Blue videos for Xbox demo kiosks found in game stores and for a developer conference. Additionally, the Bare Naked Ladies also commissioned videos for their concerts. Other videos have been specifically created for gaming magazines, including Electronic Gaming Monthly and Computer Gaming World, gaming conventions, including E3 and the Penny Arcade Expo, and the Sundance Film Festival. Red vs. Blue has also received praise from soldiers stationed in the Middle East. In August 2005, Michael Burns wrote, quote, Whenever someone tells me that they are in the military and they watch Red vs. Blue, I half expect to be put in a chokehold for having such goofy characters playing soldiers. Instead, I get endless tales about how Sarge reminds them of their CO, or how the guy in their platoon that aims the 20 megaton artillery is just like Caboose. An August 2005 blog entry by Kimi Matsuzaki displays photographs of soldiers holding various weapons as well as copies of the first and second season Red vs. Blue DVDs. Jeff Ramsey later stated in an interview, quote, We get a lot of merchandise and DVDs out to Iraq and get a lot of great emails back. Impact on the Machinima Movement Red vs. Blue is credited with attracting public attention to the art form of machinima, which existed as a mostly underground form of filmmaking with limited notice, and only within the computer and video games industry, up until Red vs. Blue's release. It also allowed for the machinima medium to expand without fear of legal persecution. The aforementioned agreement with Microsoft that allows Rooster Teeth to profit from the series without fear of copyright infringement, license fees, or external creative control has helped to set a precedent. Other video game publishers now allow use of their properties for machinima, and in some cases use machinima for promotional purposes. Additionally, Red vs. Blue has inspired other machinima series, including the Codex and Sponsors vs. Freeloaders. In the machinima industry, the series is credited with popularizing the idea of shorter, multiple episodes, and in turn, the long-running serial. This distribution format allows for gradual improvement as a result of viewer feedback, and gives viewers a reason to return for future videos. Previously, most machinima projects were released in lengthier, singular pieces. Following the success of Red vs. Blue, more machinima has been released in serial format. Distribution 
Videos are released in QuickTime, DivX, and starting with episode 26, Windows Media Video Formats. All released episodes of the season and production are freely available from the official site in 360x240 resolution, except 320x240 for WMV. A few episodes from the previous seasons are available from a rolling archive each week. The videos are rotated to the next set. This setup is intended to help control bandwidth costs. As of September 2005, the official Rooster Teeth website was serving 400 terabytes of data monthly. However, nearly all freely released episodes of Red vs. Blue are also available from websites such as Machinima.com, Planet Mirror, File Planet, Google Video, and YouTube. Members of the official website can gain sponsor status for a fee of $10 every six months. Sponsors can access videos a few days before the general public release, higher resolution, 720 x 480 for QuickTime and DivX, 640 x 480 for WMV versions of the videos, and special content released only to sponsors. Additionally, while the public archive is limited to rotating sets of videos, sponsors can access any material from the archive at any time. Although it is distributed serially over the internet, Red vs. Blue is also one of the first commercially released products made using Machinima, as opposed to a product merely containing Machinima. DVDs of the four completed seasons are sold through Rooster Teeth's official website, as well as some GameStop and Hot Topic stores in the United States. Each season is released on DVD within two months of that season's final episode. For the DVDs, the episodes of the main storyline are edited together to play continuously as a full-length film. Because the episodes as individually released often contain dialogue, that continues into or past the fade to black at the end of the video. Rooster Teeth either removes that dialogue entirely or films extra footage to replace the original fade to black. Additionally, a third version of the season is further edited for time for showing at the Lincoln Center and at other film festivals. In a 2005 interview, Burns noted that the first season, normally 75 minutes in length, was cut to 55 minutes for these venues with an entire episode omitted. Burns also noted in a website news post that the 135-minute Season 3 DVD version had to be shortened to, quote, a washable in a theater runtime of 100 minutes, end quote. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the GNU Free Documentation License, available at www.gnu.org slash copyleft slash fdl.html.